I stood alone on a bailey by a row of cannons overlooking the sea. I had a lovely view, nasty, rusting artillery aside, water bluer than blue, interrupted by bright white sea foam, earthy rocks coated with green moss protruding from the shallow seabed, the horizon line separating the blue of the ocean from the blue of the sky. Ugh, I can just feel the spirits of my ancestors in this place. A voice behind me, effused in an accent that dripped of Brooklyn, breaking the spell of the view. Faster than I could control it, my face twisted into something between a grimace and a smirk. Thankfully, I was still facing the sea, my expression hidden from the tourists behind me. Shame washed over me. All the years of trying to unlearn the reflexive disdain for African Americans that I picked up from my mother, and still... So little progress. But my irritation, and not necessarily at the tourists, was just as difficult to quell. I was willing to bet that this sort of a reaction was exactly what the Ghanaian government was trying to capitalize on, and that made the whole year of return campaign feel that much more disingenuous, unethical even. Before college, I'd spent my whole life in Ghana, And not once had the year 1619 even been mentioned. Suddenly, on its 400th anniversary, the government was marketing itself as if it had never cared more about anything else. It felt like a weird publicity stunt designed to make plenty money of people who earn dollars. I might have found it amusing if I wasn't worried about how many Americans were literally buying into it, especially now that it was December the climax of the commemorative year and peak holiday season too. You're being cynical, Adjopa, I admonish myself, just like your mother.